Hi, my name is Georgi Radulov and the purpose of this video is uh, to derive the minority carrier concentrations at the edge of the space charge region. So we have a PN junction, a diode, and uh, here in this picture um, the internal mechanics at thermal equilibrium are shown. So what we have is, uh, uh, this is the N region, and this is the P region. In the N region, this is semiconductor which is doped by donor atoms. So there is uh, abundance of free mobile negatively charged electrons and we know them by the design. This here is the um, donor ion. So together they form the electrically neutral donor atom. The same is here. We have the immobile locked in the lattice negatively charged ion of the acceptor atom and a free running hole. So what happens when we connect uh, the N region and the P region of uh, the semiconductor in the metallurgical junction here? Imagine that you have an electron here and this electron, which is majority carrier in this N region, is now interfaced with a region in which the concentrations of electron uh, are extremely low and because they are minority carriers here in the P region. So due to diffusion forces, the electron just migrates here to the other side, from areas of large concentration to areas of small concentration. This is the diffusion force. The electron leaves behind the positively charged ions of the donor atoms. So this is already migrated. And this is charge which is distributed in space. The same happens with the holes. Holes sees a very low concentration of holes on the other side and they just diffuse to the other side but they leave behind the negatively charged ions of the acceptor atoms. So this space charge is positive here and negative here on this side and it creates a built-in electric field from the positive to the negative side. Now, this is the direction of the built-in electric field and it opposes, at certain point, further migration of electrons or holes. So, for example, for, for an electron, now, it has to oppose this direction, this electric field, because the force, the drift force that this built-in electric field exercises on the electron is in the opposite direction. So, the diff so for the electrons, and this is a PN junction, and for an electron there is a diffusion force moving the electron from the N to the P, but there is then a drift force due to the built-in electric field that moves the electron back from the P region to the N region. At certain point, the diffusion forces and the drift forces, they balance. And this is the thermal equilibrium. And the expansion of the space charge region ceases. And it's in thermal equilibrium. Uh, so all these uh, uh, mechanics that I just uh, discussed about diffusion and drift, they happen for both the electrons and the holes, just that the signs are opposite. Now here is the band diagram. This is the, the conduction band energy and this is the valence band energy. And because of the internal electric field, there will be certain potential difference between uh, both regions. And this potential difference will cause bending of the bands. So uh, the N site here will be at lower energy levels 
than the P side. And the difference of the energy levels is actually the potential uh, barrier, the potential difference built in uh, potential difference. And this is what opposes diffusion, further diffusion of electrons from one side to the, the other side. For an electron to be able to diffuse to the other side, it needs to have an energy which is higher than the potential difference. Otherwise, the drift forces of this built-in electric field will pull the electron back. Now let's see what happens when we apply an external voltage here, so we are no longer in thermal equilibrium. So for example, we apply a voltage in this direction. So see here the positive side of the externally applied voltage is connected to the N side. So now effectively for the electrons we lower their energies. So the sign, the electrical sign uh, of the charge of the electron is negative. So if we connect the positive side of the, side of the external voltage to this region, um, we effectively lower further the uh, uh, energy of uh, an electron. So then this, effectively what, what happens is that the bending of the band diagram increases by the amount of the externally applied reverse voltage. So it, it becomes even harder for electrons to diffuse to the other side because the barrier, the uh, uh, built-in uh, potential barrier now is increased by the amount of externally applied voltage. If we reverse the voltage so we connect now the negative side of the external uh, voltage to the end side. We actually increase the energy of the electrons. So this level here increases, which effectively decreases the potential barrier by the amount of the externally applied voltage. Now it's easier for electrons from this side to diffuse to the other side. They have to overcome a smaller barrier. By the way, the same is uh, valid for the, for the holes. So we can just imagine holes here as bubbles which float, which float. So they'll have to dive in order to overcome the potential barrier. The lowering of the potential barrier in forward uh, bias mode, you can imagine also um, uh, in the following way. So we have certain built-in electric field uh, which, which is just uh, in thermal equilibrium, the existing built-in electric field. Then we apply an external electric field which has this direction so here is the plus and here is the minus so this will be in this direction so we have certain electric field due to the externally applied voltage so the resulting electric field if you sum up this will be this one for example now you see that from uh, uh, the thermal equilibrium to the forward uh, by a small, the electric field effectively reduced. So if the electric field reduced, then the potential difference between these two points reduced. And this is the lowering of the potential difference which is seen in the bending of the band diagram. So this is uh, the video in which the different voltages are applied. Now, uh, what we want to do at the moment now for this video is to calculate the concentration of minority carriers at the edges of the space charge region. So what we want to know is what is the concentration of electrons at this point and what is the concentration of holes in the N region at this point. 
to do uh, to, to to make our derivations uh, we need several assumptions so the first assumption is that the depletion region has sharp boundaries so these boundaries are clearly defined we can say up to this point we have the space charge region and beyond this point is just the P material the second assumption is the Boltzmann approximation for the concentration of carriers which basically says that we can express the majority carriers with the amount of doping that we have so for example the electrons which are majority carriers in the N-site material they are simply the concentration of, 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 of donor uh, atoms which are doped and they can be expressed as the intrinsic carrier concentration and the differences between the Fermi level and the intrinsic Fermi level the more we dope the more this level goes up and this difference becomes larger the same for for the holes but then we look at this difference now um, the third assumption is that the low injection approximation is valid and this says that if we inject for example electrons from the N side to the P side in the P side these electrons are uh, minority carriers the majority carriers there the holes in the P side are so many that the balance between holes and electrons will not change so the holes will remain at the majority carriers uh, at the um, uh, P side even though the injected electrons minority carriers are in large quantities still the quantities of holes is much much larger so even though that um, these electrons that diffuse to the P side will recombine with, with uh, holes uh, what we say here under this approximation is that the concentrations of uh, holes as majority carriers will not change so the change due to recombination uh, with minority carriers is negligible and uh, this is uh, expressed actually here in the in the in the next two points that is to say that the majority carriers are so many that if we inject some minority carriers the number of majority carriers will not change significantly in other words there are magnitude differences between the number of majority carriers and the injected minority carriers the the fourth assumption is that the total current through the PN junction is uh, constant so I, I've put this uh, uh, fourth assumption in three points the individual electron and hole currents are continuous functions through the PN structure and the individual electron and hole currents are constant through the depletion region this basically says that if, if we have an amount of electrons so just drawn here that have the sufficient energy to overcome the potential barrier and they diffuse to the other side what comes out from this point will arrive in the same quantities at this point inside the space charge region there will be no generation no recombination um, no in further other injection so they just the minority carriers cross from one side and they appear in the other side this is assumption this is assumption but this is assumption which we will use in order to derive the concentration uh, uh, the concentrations of uh, minority carriers at least for first approximations of these uh, concentrations okay so now let's review the boundary conditions uh, this is the upper side of the band uh, diagram we have uh, the P region and the N region and the majority carriers in N region are electrons so we have a lot of electrons free moving electrons with energy above the conduction band uh, but if we if we plot these energies of, of, of the electron concentrations here in this in this axis 
what we see is that the concentration of electrons, the electrons with higher energies, they decrease exponentially. So we have a lot of electrons here, but if we look at higher energy levels, there the, the concentration of electrons decreases. So generally, most of the electrons do not have the sufficient energy to overcome the built-in potential difference. However, every now and then it can happen that uh, some electrons acquire the sufficient energy and this sufficient energy will allow them to diffuse to the other side. So once the electrons are here, uh, they will want to relax their energy to lower states and then through drift force they will return back. So this is illustrated in this video. Here is the electron and now it moves to the other side due to uh, diffusion and then due to drift it will return eventually. And this process of course repeats and this is how the diffusion forces reach equilibrium with the drift forces. Now let's write the equations. So this is our picture that we drew here and this is the band diagram. So uh, we start our derivations with uh, the expression of the majority carrier concentration. So the holes in the P region in thermal equilibrium are simply, of course, the concentration of acceptor atoms, the dopants. And this is also reflected in the band diagram. This is equal to the concentration of intrinsic areas and an exponential function of here, the difference between the intrinsic Fermi level and the, uh, and the Fermi level. The same for the electrons in the N side. They are simply the donor, uh, the concentration of donor atoms. And then this can be seen in the band diagram uh, as the different and the exponent, which is the difference between the Fermi level and the intrinsic Fermi level. We just multiply both to get the product Na and D, so nothing special. Here, of course, the Fermi level will cancel out and we get this expression. Uh, and now, um, just a little bit algebra and we reach this expression and this expression is kind of interesting because it expresses the built-in potential difference of so this difference with respect to the thermal voltage and the concentration of acceptors and donors in the P and in the N side. So our goal, I just remain, uh, remind our goal, our goal is to express the minority carriers at the edge of the space region. So in this case here, the electrons at the P side and the, and the holes in the N side. In other words, we want to know how many uh, carriers diffuse from one side to the other side. So for this reason we start with this and then we have to substitute the concentration Na and Nd with the minority <coughs> carriers. Um, so let's start. The Nd is simply substituted with the majority carriers electrons in the N side. And then to express minority carriers we use the expression that uh, the, the concentration uh, of uh, the intrinsic carrier square is the product of holes times the uh, electrons. And we apply this for the P side in order to have an expression of uh, the minority carriers in the P side, the electrons, with respect to the intrinsic carrier concentration and the concentration of the acceptor uh, atoms. So now we have an expression here for Na and then we can just put it in this equation. And then here what we derived is that the built-in potential difference now is a function of 
the electron concentration in N site and the electron concentration on the P site. Now, from here, uh, just again rearranging uh, the terms, we can simply derive a relationship for electrons as the minority carriers on one side as a function of the majority carriers on the other side. So what we have here is that the concentration of electrons as minority carriers depends on the concentration of electrons as majority carriers on the other side and the built-in and the exponent uh, in the exponent is the built-in potential difference. So this is a small number because these are minority concentration. This is extremely large number because this is majority concentration. And this is a very small number because we have an exponent which is a negative exponent of the built-in potential. Now what will happen if we apply an external voltage VA? So we, what we already discussed is that by applying an external voltage we actually manipulate, change the potential difference. We actually change VBI. If uh, VA is forward bias, then uh, we will subtract this forward bias, external applied voltage, from the built-in potential difference. Uh, effectively reducing, so in this example, reducing uh, the potential difference. So then exponentially more electrons now have the needed energy levels in order to diffuse to the other side. So we can expect that at the edge of the space charge region here the concentration of electrons will effectively increase. Alright, so uh, let's see this with equations. So you see here now the concentration is not for thermal equilibrium because we applied an external voltage. So the concentrations of minority carriers at the edge of the space charge region is majority carriers on the other side minus the potential difference, ex exponent of the potential difference here. We can split this term and then we write this and then we recognize that this is the exactly the expression of the minority carriers in the uh, so this is this expression uh, sorry this expression which we derived which is the minority carriers at thermal equilibrium so we can write then this equation so this equation says that if we apply an external voltage the concentration of minority carriers at the edge of the space charge region changes exponentially. And uh, of course this is intuitively uh, very logical because now exponentially more electrons have the sufficient energy level to overcome the reduced uh, potential uh, barrier. The same thing can be written uh, for the holes as minority carriers. So this is, we derive it for, for electron, but the same thing can be written for, for the holes. Effectively, what happens is illustrated uh, here. So this is the space, and these are the carrier concentrations. In thermal equilibrium, when VA is zero, these are the normal levels of minority carriers electron in the P side and minority carriers holes in the N side. As we apply external voltage in forward, for example, in this, in this example, in forward mode, we increase basically the uh, minority concentration because we decrease the built-in potential difference. With external voltage, we decrease the potential difference and now uh, exponentially more carriers have the sufficient energy to diffuse to the other side. So then in this case, applying voltage VA, the carrier concentration from this level of thermal equilibrium will jump through this exponential term into this level for electrons and for holes, which are minority carriers in the end side, we will jump from this side to this side. Now, these carriers will further diffuse into this side and will constitute the current that is flowing through the PN junction. 
this is why it's very important to know these concentrations and this will determine actually the exponential volt ampere characteristic of the diode thank you very much for your attention